Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We're in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 10, going through the Bible for the fifth time in the last 38 years. The New Testament is already done for this fifth series. The previous four, along with this one, are all archived at the Scripture Verse by Verse website, and that's found at the Bible versebyverse.com. So you can go there, choose, click, listen, study any part of the Bible that you want to study. Just bring your Bible and a hunger for God's Word. Again, that's to the Bible, verse by verse dot com. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your Word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Jeremiah 17. Let's begin our reading in verse 9. We looked at this last time. Very important verse, though, because it says the heart, it's talking about the heart of man, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And yet you have psychologists and counselors today. Follow your heart, they tell you. Just follow your heart. You follow your heart, it's going to lead you into sin and into the lake of fire. That's where it's going to lead you. Your heart is deceitful above all things. It will tell you what you want to hear, not what is true. The only exception is when you have the Holy Spirit in you, and the Holy Spirit can act as a check and a balance to give you discernment to know when you're heart is telling you the wrong thing, but your sin nature will tell you lies all day long. It's not a good guide. We need the Word of God to be our guide and the Holy Spirit who lives in us as Christians. The reason the world is in such a colossal mess, the reason politicians have no answers and they just go from one level of chaos to another, some worse than others, is because so many of them are not saved. And they let their heart guide them and their pocketbook too. 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the conscience, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. God does not judge by appearance. Instead, God looks down into our soul and he then judges our motives. He judges our desires. God is not fooled by what may look good. The Bible says man judges according to appearance, but God judges the heart. 11. As the partridge sitteth on eggs and hatcheth them not, so he that Getteth riches, and not by right, shall leave them in the midst of his days, and at his end shall be a fool. A fool is someone who stores up the things of this world, but is not rich in good works before God. That's how Jesus described a fool. And that person is a fool because sooner or later he's going to lose everything that he has worked for. It's another reason to trust God and to obey God and to trust God to give you what you need. You may not get everything that you want, but God still gives you what you need. 12. A glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all who forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they who depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. In other words, those who do not live by the word of God and those who do not live by faith and obedience and trusting in God will have no reward beyond this world. If you go the route of most people, you're going to get old, you're going to get sick. 
So before you die, even before you die, you're not going to be able to enjoy the things that you put your trust in, whether it's money or health, maybe a home, whatever the case may be. You better trust God. Because if you trust in the things of this world, you better live for God. Because if you live for the things of this world and you don't live for God, then you're not going to have anything in eternity at all. Nothing good, all bad. So Israel may not feel shame right now in the days of Jeremiah because their hearts are so hard when it comes to sin. But they're sure going to feel shame on Judgment Day, if not before. They're going to feel shame when they are condemned. They will feel shame and embarrassment. They will feel foolish on the day that Jesus tells them, each and every one of them individually, to depart from him into everlasting fire. 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. If we have God do something for us, it's going to get done. And it will be done right. And it will also last. <clears throat> so if God saves us from hell, we're never going to have to worry about going to that place because the Bible says that he saves us to the uttermost, meaning until the very end. He won't change his mind. 15. Behold, <clears throat> they say unto me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. Jeremiah had been proclaiming the word of God, and he has been warning the people from God's word that they need to repent or judgment was going to hit. The people did not listen, and because they didn't listen, their hearts grew harder and harder toward the truth and toward God. Now they're at the point where they're saying, Hey, Jeremiah, tell, tell God to bring it on. All this stuff you've been warning about, and you say God's been warning us about, tell him to bring it on. People said, Let God try to punish us. They were so arrogant that they actually thought that they could dare God. Egg him on. And he wouldn't have the guts to do what he said he was going to do. So they were mocking this idea of judgment. Well, in Isaiah chapter 5, God says, Woe to those who say to God, Judge us. 16. As for me, I have not hastened from being a shepherd to follow thee, neither have I desired the woeful day thou knowest that which came out of my lips was right before thee. In other words, Jeremiah says, God, this is what they are saying. They're daring you to judge them. But you know I would never say anything like that because I would never mock you, God. Jeremiah says, I proclaim your word so that people can avoid being punished if they will only repent and follow you. 17. Be not a terror unto me. Thou art my hope in the day of evil. Jeremiah says, God, I'm counting on you to save me. I'm counting on you to make a difference between me and the mockers. I'm looking to you, God, to be my refuge on judgment day. 18. Let them be confounded that persecute me, but let not me be confounded. Let them be dismayed, but let not me di be dismayed. Bring upon them the day of evil and destroy them with double destruction. These people were giving Jeremiah a hard time. Jeremiah was not getting revenge. Instead, he simply remained steadfast in doing the work of of the Lord. He just, yeah, what they were doing was terrible. Terrible to God, terrible to him. But he just kept his God focus. He kept focusing on, okay, the one purpose I have in life 
is to serve you. God is to obey you. It is to do what is right in your eyes and trust that what happens, happens. And it's in your will and you'll work it all out somehow, some way. So Jeremiah, with that attitude, kept preaching the truth because he knew it was the right thing to do. And of course, it kept getting him into hotter and hotter water. So Jeremiah calls on the God of justice to take care of those who are unjust and to take care of those who are persecuting him. You do it, Lord. I'm just going to focus on what I know you have called me to do. The Bible says that vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. We should not get vengeance on people because that's not our job. That's God's job. When Jeremiah, the servant of God, was attacked, it was actually an attack against God. And it was an attack against God's honor. What Jeremiah spoke was the word of God. And that's the reason why Jeremiah prays for the destruction of the wicked. Anytime that anyone ever sins against you, it is God who feels the brunt of that sin. It is God who feels offended. So, as a result, you can pray for God to take vengeance because it's against him. See, primarily. So you can, don't worry, God, will, God is just. He's not going to let people get away with offending him like that. He's going to take care of it. You don't have to get vengeance. You don't have to, you don't have to get vengeance for God. That's his business. He'll do it. He'll take care of it. Study all of God's Word with me at the Scripture Verse by Verse website, and that is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Go there, choose, click, and listen from four complete series, going on five, going through the entire Bible, verse by verse. Now, if you want to be a part of Scripture Verse by Verse, you can be, by praying for me and God's Word. Do it right now while you're thinking about it, before you forget Write a note, put it on your refrigerator door, your bathroom mirror, pray for Mike, pray for God's word. And every time you see that note, you can say another prayer and be a part of this ministry. And don't forget to study God's word with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. That really is the fun part. It's fellowshipping with God through his word. When you take a break, then go to the front page and click the donate button and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead, because that makes you a big part of this ministry as well. Thank you. Until next time, so long.